hard can this be? The ruler drops at a random moment, and I catch it. What's the big deal? What could go wrong? Whatever you do, try this at home. Yep, definitely, definitely try this at home. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Welcome to Distort, the show where we distort time to show you things you might otherwise miss with the human eye. I'm David. And I'm Mauricio, and this week, we're measuring how dumb and slow we are in centimeters. What? So we're gonna do a little trick today, okay. and the idea is, um, I have a $20 bill here. Thank you. And I haven't given it to you, why are you <laughs> thanking me? You can, however, keep it okay. if you can catch it. Easy. All you gotta do is catch it. Easy. There we go. Real easy. Yeah, real easy. Okay. All right, all right. So all right. Oh my God. <laughs> Most people have an average delayed response of about 190 milliseconds to detect and respond to visual stimulus. And the bill travels past your fingers faster than 190 oh milliseconds. God. So we're gonna help you out a little bit. All right. We've got a ruler. Now, a typical ruler is actually gonna be long enough for people to catch, but it's also gonna offer us a way to sort of benchmark people's performances. In Jackie's case here, it took her about 14 and a half centimeters to catch it. So when we filmed this at 400 frames per second, it kind of illustrates just how idiotic we all look. Therefore, we got PhD MD neurologist Adam Gazzley to kind of explain why our brains seem to function kind of stupid slow. In technical layman's terms, what's going on from how the brain identifies that they need to take an action to the action happening? It's a complicated process. It seems very straightforward because you're observing you know, one act. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that there are many different processes in the brain that allow you to do that. So I'd say if you laid out all the sequences, it would be anticipation, so they're ready, maybe a motor sequence already ready to fire. Then the sensation comes in, which is just the retina picking up the information that has started moving. Then the perception, which is really an interpretation of what's happening, and that happens in the visual parts of the brain. The prefrontal cortex, the front part of your brain, is involved in the decision-making process of actually, okay, go ahead and grab it. The premotor cortex sort of defines the sequence. The motor part of your brain, which is in the middle, will then send a signal down your spinal cord, which will tell the muscles to grab. So, you know, there's a lot of processes. So this is several hundred milliseconds in order to have an action like that. You know, it almost feels like Mother Nature made us using Rube Goldberg techniques. And one of the cooler things that Adam explained to us is that our brains are essentially functioning in the future when anticipating a movement they need to do, and this ruler test is a perfect example. Because they knew what they were going to be doing, and they knew it was going to fall, they could, in, in some ways, it's not exactly how it works in the brain, but preload a motor sequence in. Oh, so knowing like, at some point I'm gonna close my, I already know I'm gonna close my fingers, exactly. I just need to know when to tell myself to close my fingers. Exactly. So you saw Annie, and she got really frustrated and upset. Yeah, did so you did that? I do better than everyone? Let me do that again. Lots of things are going to affect performance, right? So one is age. We know that people's response time, especially in tests like this, tend to increase up until like the early 20s, and then they decline fairly linearly across lifespan. That means every year of life, you're getting a little slower in something like this. No, you're, like, get, get, let's you're we're locked doing on this again. Get over here. Your brain has what we refer to as plasticity. You were giving it I'm ready eyes. No, I was, that's called, that's called zoning out. So if you did an experiment like this again and again, you would get better at it. I am gonna drop it at some point now, Annie, so okay. focus. I'm focusing. Mm -hmm. There would be a limit by which you just could not process the information yeah. any faster. Are you done? I'm ready. But you could get better at it. <laughs> Annie, are you 
you ready? Are you ready, Ed? Shut up. <laughs> I have work to do. So if you are distracted, if there's something else that's pulling your attention away from that goal, you will also be slower. I just want to let it be known that you know I'm very tired right now. Okay. Fatigue certainly impacts things like response time. Like everyone that drives knows that, you know, that you're, you're really not on top of your game when you're fatigued, then it will affect your performance, especially when you're talking about performance like this, which is in the millisecond range. Now, I thought how That's close hard. to the top of the ruler you can get without yes. dropping the ruler. That's the hard one. So I was the best, right? <laughs> That's true, yes. Good right? Good job, Annie. As you get older, is it less, is the word plastic? Yeah, I would say it is. There was a long period of time where people felt that your brain was not plastic at all when you were older, that it was essentially like concrete. The whole teaching an old dog new tricks. Exactly, yeah. that you'd pass this sort of period of time where you uh, were able to change, like these critical periods they were called, and then that was the brain you had. And the only thing that would happen would be that it would get worse. Now granted, there is a lot of degeneration in terms of our neural processing as we get older, but we now appreciate that the brain retains plasticity throughout your entire life. We look at that as in very encouraging way, that if we could figure out the special sort of ingredients on what to do to keep your brain healthy, mm -hmm. and you do that throughout your life, then you will be able to retain a lot of these skills. Huge thanks to Dr. Adam Gasly for helping us out in this episode, as well as Revision 3 for participating in our test. Mm -hmm. and make sure you subscribe here on YouTube, and if you like the show, do us a favor, head over to iTunes and leave a rating and a review. I'm David. And I'm Mauricio, and we'll see you next week. We've been reading the vocal minority of you who don't want to see all the science talk. You just want to cut to the chase and get the eye candy, just the slow motion clips themselves. Yeah. Last Rites is a 218 pound robot that competes in the heavyweight class division of robot battles. Got it. Hmm, so smart, you so smart. Got it. Uh, grasshopper. <laughs>